as you came and landed on Jesus, land on each of us, that we may know ourselves as deeply beloved by you and act in the world in the confidence of that love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> So I'm wondering, what does it mean to be chosen, to be singled out for a blessing by God? Now, some of you may think that Joe and I have been chosen, called to ordained ministry, if you will, <clears throat> excuse me, and that somehow that means we have been singled out and blessed. It reminds me of a story. After a church service on a Sunday morning, a young boy suddenly announced to his mother, Mom, I've decided to become a minister when I grow up. That's okay with your dad and me, but what made you decide that? asked the mother. Well, said the little boy, I have to go to church every Sunday, and I figure it will be more fun to stand up and talk than to sit and listen. <laughs> Perhaps at a practical level, it may just be that Joe and I are better talkers than listeners, though I hope not. And honestly, I think that some folks, folks, think that we've been singled out in a way that makes us better human beings or less te tempted to sin or more able to resist our human impulses. It may be true that we've spent more time developing disciplines in our lives to help us with all of that, but the dirty little secret about This is a picture of two monks, and they have that tonsure haircut, and they're wearing their cloaks and sandals, and they're walking sort of piously with their hands folded in front of them. And one is saying to the other, I could be a saint if I really wanted to. <laughs> the other, the other is, is a picture of an old lady standing next to a priest in front of a confessional booth. And the priest is standing there and wearing his cross, and he has his prayer book and his stole neatly tucked under his arm. And the old lady is saying to him, of course, my confession is probably not as interesting as yours would be. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is that although Joe and I and all other ordained folks are singled out or chosen for a specific ministry, we do it with no more and no less inspiration and protection from God than any of you who are also by baptism called into ministry in the church. And although many of you may joke with us that we have a direct line to the guy or the woman upstairs with regard to everything from the weather to finding a mate, surely you don't believe that. So I ask you, how have you been singled out by God, chosen blessed, and for what? The story from Luke's Gospel today is about how the scene for salvation was set and the ground tilled and the people prepared for the coming of the Messiah 
that all of this was done by John the Baptist. And how, after being baptized like all other people in this scene, baptized in the River Jordan, repentant and cleansed, Jesus experienced an intervention from another dimension. The heavens opening, the wind or the movement of this Holy Spirit, a dove, like an angel, something energized by the divine, and a voice from above, from the heavens. You are my son, the beloved. In you I am well pleased. You know, so often we want to make our religion, our faith, and even our lives about rules to follow. I think that's just a human response and a good option especially in chaos, we can get overwhelmed by the complex lives we live and the various competing perspectives on decisions we are called upon to make. So we need categories to organize our thoughts and feelings. We need ways to integrate the sources of our wisdom into our lives, the kind of wisdom we rely on, including the sources of our faith and church, the scripture and church teaching and tradition, and the lived experience of the church community. We need ways to help us with our decisions that we may choose rightly and wisely for our good and for the good of others, and even choose in line with God and who we were created to be. Theologians call that exercise ethics, and they understand it as a part of practical theology, how you apply what it is that you believe. It answers the question, how do we live out what we profess in our faith? Many years ago, a man came to me who had been married for 25 years and had two daughters. Although often the life of the party, he confessed to having been shut down and miserable in his own quiet way in his marriage for many, many years. After much work and reflection and some therapy, he owned up to the ways he had not communicated over the years his dissatisfaction to his wife and also the ways that he felt he had tried everything but had not been successful in changing the dynamic. And so he imagined that he would just live out the rest of his life, feeling inside alone and sad, but always entertaining others, seeking satisfaction with his job and in his friendships, and especially <clears throat> in his relationships with his daughters. He had prayed often about this situation, asking God for a sign about what to do. And he spoke passionately about wrestling with God in the middle of the night about his situation. He said proudly, I know the church's teaching that marriage is sacred and that God would, not, would, that God would want me to stay married. At which point I stopped him and asked, is marriage more sacred to God than you are? Are you living out your life as if you are chosen, beloved by God, precious to God? Do you carry God's joy in your heart? Is God pleased that you are living into all that you have been created to be. He was stunned. He admitted that he had been afraid to really take his dilemma to God in prayer and instead had relied on the rules and the teachings of the church to reconcile himself to his struggle and conflict. And guess what? It had been insufficient. Now, I'm not recommending to anyone here that may be struggling in his or her marriage 
that I'm necessarily calling it quits. I am proposing that each one of us is called, chosen by God and beloved, precious, and that the God we worship is well pleased when we are honest about who we are, repentant about where we make mistakes, willing to start over and be transformed, ready to hear in God's voice an invitation that at first may seem radical or even out of line. Eventually, this man found that as he followed his heart and went more deeply into his life in prayer and sought God's wisdom and tried to live into the fullness of life that he had been given, that it meant that he faced a break with his wife that he might continue to become all that God had created him to be. Others in similar situations might go to God in prayer and find they are called to stay and that whole, whole lives can be transformed through that. So I'm not recommending his way or another. But I do believe that life does not get lived out with pat answers and certainly does not get enjoyed by simply following the rules. We live deeply into our faith when we wade into the unknown waters of our identity as above all children of God and deeply loved. Beloved by the God who wants good for us, who knows us more than we can ask or imagine, who wants to make all things new, including us. What does it mean to be chosen, to be singled out for a blessing by God? It means that there are always, that we are always working out what it means to be God's people in our lives and in the world. That we are challenged to an active life of prayer that honestly engages us with our own humanity and the world, challenging us at all levels to rely on the resources that come from the direct line of love that comes to us from our Creator. What it means to be chosen is to be always discerning where God is, how God is speaking to us and through us and others, and to be always ready to be surprised and blessed, sometimes outside of what appears to be the rules. What it means to be chosen, like the stories we will continue to hear throughout this epiphany season, is to be invited beyond the rules to the territory of risk where we are constantly in need of God's guidance. It may be sweating it out, wrestling with God in the middle of the night as we lay on our beds. It may be when we are broken enough to be forced to our knees in prayer and supplication that we can finally engage in an honest partnership with, with the divine as we make our choices and live out our lives. What it means to be chosen is to be engaged in an active life of listening and acting, relying on God. So the dirty little secret about this message to you is that most of us really find it hard to deeply believe that God loves us this much. As human beings, it's just hard for us to imagine the deep love that God has for us. So I'm going to ask us to say this out loud for us and for each other. We will say it twice, and these are the words we want to say. The same words that Jesus heard spoken to him after his baptism. So we're going to say, you are my child, beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are my child beloved. With you I am well pleased. 
You are my child, beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now one more time and listen to your neighbors speaking the voice of God to your ears. You are my child, beloved. With you I am well pleased. 